welcome back to the e-commerce talk. Today we're going to be talking about replatforming. Our guest Tim will explain how you can evaluate if your current platform is fulfilling your e-commerce needs and how to transition to a solution that does meet your business's needs. Today's guest is Tim Van Hatten, VP of Sales at Sana Commerce. Welcome to the show, Tim. Thanks, Katrina. Tim, your experience as VP of Sales at Sana Commerce gives you unique insight into customers' needs and meeting these needs by implementing an e-commerce system. Could you tell us a bit more about your experience and about replatforming? Yeah, sure, I can. Um, so, um, as a VP of Sales uh, for the EMEA region of Sana Commerce, I am responsible for the sales organization in the key regions in, uh, in EMEA, meaning that I speak to customers in, in different countries uh, from different cultures and they all have similar needs and similar uh, experiences as well with, uh, with e-commerce. So what we see a lot nowadays is where we, uh, where we did see a lot of first generation e-commerce customers in, in, in the past. Um, now we see m much more uh, customers moving to their second or even their third generation e-commerce platform. Um, obviously having different needs and asking us different questions and having different requirements from their e-commerce solutions. Well, that's very interesting and uh, that's probably why you're our replatforming expert here at Zana. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so could you talk about the first steps you would have to take to replatform and when does a business decide they need to replatform their e-commerce software? Um, so, when a business decides to re-platform their e-commerce software um, is typically when they have an e-commerce platform. Of course, they have an e-commerce platform already. Otherwise, there wouldn't be no, there wouldn't be any re-platforming. Um, typically, they have their e-commerce solution for several years, um, and they have come to the conclusion that either they have maybe met their initial goals with e-commerce, or that they see a shift in uh, their customers' needs, so what we call the B2B buyers' needs, um, and they want to really make a next step in e-commerce. Um, so what we recommend our customers to do if they consider replatforming is have a look at what were their initial goals when they started with their e-commerce solution. Um, was it to increase online sales? Was it to increase sales in general? Was it to be more efficient? Was it to be? Uh, uh, was it to improve their customer journey? Um, and to really assess whether they have met those goals they uh, had in some cases several years ago, um, and if if they would do it all over again, if they would have similar goals or maybe completely different goals. So the first step will always be assess the the, the solution you currently have. Um, and see whether they uh, have met the needs you had in the past or whether they still need, meet the needs you have today. Thank you. Well, I think that answers a bit of the question for our viewers um, of when do you actually need to replatform and when you're considering it. So the customer demands are an important factor and that leads us to the next question. Based on your research, on our research, we see an increasing focus on customer experience. How does that affect the company's decision to replatform it with an integrated e-commerce solution? Um, customer experience is as important for our customers as it is for their customers, right? Yeah. So for our customers' customers, which we call the B2B buyer. Um, and particularly if you are speaking about replatforming, the B2B buyer is also a consumer when he or she is not working, right? Just like Naturally. we are consumers and like we um, place our orders or buy our exactly. clothing or whatever we do online in, uh, in web stores or on, on, on marketplaces um, more than we did five years ago or four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so the whole generation of B2B buyers is first of all getting a new expectation of what it is to buy online as a consumer and that really sets, starts to set the standard for what people expect in their professional environment as well. So um, the example we we tend to use is, say you would be a B2B buyer and you would be it would be a Sunday evening and you would go online to buy yourself whatever, a pair of boots. Um, and then you have this great tailored experience and you get uh, this, this, this great online experience and you know exactly when you're 
goods will be delivered and, and everything's fine. And then at some point you get to work on Monday and uh, then you order your goods for your business um, with one of our customers or customers to be. Um, and then you have to go into a very old fashioned online portal, if at all there is an online portal, right? So that's the web store of five years ago yeah. cannot compare anymore with what the B2B buyer is now expecting because he or she is expecting pretty much the B2C level. Okay, that's interesting. So they're expecting the same experience they have in their day-to-day -day life. Or at least uh, uh, similar and, and that uh, translates into different features and different functionalities of course because B2B uh, web stores are very very different from B2C ones uh, because if we for instance go to a B2C web store uh, as a consumer we probably have the same uh, the same product portfolio we can choose from and we both have to um, uh, type in our uh, delivery address yeah. and we both uh, pay online. Um, that's very different in a B2B environment of course, but the level of customer experience um, and, 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 and customer satisfaction, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's setting the standard in B2C, setting the standard for B2B as well. Wow, that's uh, very good. And that leads very good into our next question. How can a business measure their customer experience? Well, right, that's, that's a very good question. Um, because if you see that that's getting more and more important, then you also want to see whether you succeed in improving yeah. your customer okay. experience, of course. Um, so, so one of the metrics many of our customers use is to uh, see, to, to measure how many of their uh, orders are being ordered online. Um, because we see that our customers' customers, so the B2B buyers, are not always um, ad adopting the new solution. So uh, some of their customers might, or, or a large deal of their customers in some cases, might still order via their old-fashioned way of ordering rather than going to the online portal. So the, the easier it gets for your customer to place their orders online via your web store, um, the more customers will go via that route, of course. Um, so that's so that's one of the metrics is uh, what percentage of your customers, what percentage of the B2B buyers is actually placing their orders online and is that increasing over the uh, after you have replatformed, for instance. Um, another metric is if you compare the order value of an online order to a traditional order, so to say, um, because ordering online should be more easy, should be more, uh, should provide a better experience to your customers, so also should lead into larger volume, val higher values of the orders uh, from, your, from your customers. So these are just examples of metrics to see if your customers have a good experience online, then they probably order more often online and they probably order more products whenever they are ordering online. Well, that's great. So now you also know how to measure your customer experience if you are replatforming or to measure your current uh, customer experience of your current platform. So after evaluating the customer experience and any other KPIs, what should a enterprise research in order to consider replatforming? Um, what we see in typically in, in, in uh, enterprise customers or prospects is that they also, um, well, I, pretty much in, in, in any customer prospect, but all, particularly maybe, maybe enterprise, um, is that they, apart from customer experience, also um, care about and measure the total cost of ownership. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned integrated e-commerce uh, before, um, and that's, that's one of the things that, one of, that our prospects and customers care about a lot. Um, because um, what Sana does um, is leverage all the data and uh, business logic that, and particularly enterprises that have larger product portfolios, many more customers in different regions, for instance, um, have a lot of data and, and uh, logic in their ERPs. What Sana does is leverage all that information that's already there, so do not replicate that, but leverage the data that's already there with the integration, and that um, helps our customers to decrease their total cost of ownership because there are no interfaces between the different solutions that they would have to maintain, that would have to develop in the first place or have developed by someone else and have to maintain. Um, and also you are not storing the same or similar data in two different uh, databases being your ERP and your e-commerce solution. So again, um, on top of uh, customer experience, total cost of ownership, 
um, is, is a very important topic for the enterprise. That's very interesting. Um, moving on to our next question. What type of platform would help a business grow? Um, that would be a scalable platform. Um, so a platform that allows you to, uh, for instance, if you roll out your business or you want to grow your business maybe internationally, that makes it easy to uh, deal with various tax regulations or the various currencies to make it easy to add uh, web stores, for instance, uh, to one uh, to one instance. So if you have, for instance, look how Asana deals with that. Um, we already mentioned that Asana framework is integrated into your ERP um, and you can have multiple web stores connected to your Asana framework. So if your ERP, for instance, is hosted in Europe, say Germany, mm -hmm. but you have web stores in different countries, maybe the UK and Spain and Switzerland, um, you could connect all those web stores to that one single SANA framework if that's connected to one single ERP. And then if you have, for instance, an additional or at some point you start expanding your business to the States, um, and you'd have an ERP uh, instance in the US, then you would just add your SANA framework there and then have maybe web stores for North America and different Latin American countries, for instance. Um, or maybe you want to add a different brand. You want to uh, you want to have a, a, an additional brand uh, on online. Um, you could just leverage the data from that same ERP and have an additional web store. Um, there's there's different scenarios that be uh, that would be uh, that would be possible. Maybe you are typically a B two B customer, what the typical Sana customer is. But at some point you want to explore the direct to consumer market, for instance, and you don't want to have um, that going through the same web store um, as your, your B2B um, sales. Um, you could then just easily add web stores to the same framework so that makes our customers scalable. All right, so let's move on to our next topic. What are the things that a business should look out for after choosing to switch e-commerce platforms? Um, what we see a lot is that, um, well, we don't very often have to tell our prospects or customers what to look out for because they, they very often are very aware of, particularly if they are replatforming, um, they might have had an interface solution in the past um, and then they have already experienced that it's uh, very costly and, and, and a lot of work to maintain interfaces. Um, so many of our prospects, particularly that are replatforming, are looking to have a solution that is as uh, native as possible to their ERPs. Um, so Sana has integrations with um, SAP and Microsoft ERPs, as you might know. Um, and so typically what, what we hear a lot is that they want to have a e-commerce solution that fits their ERP better than their previous solution did. Um, and at the same time, adding value to customer journey and uh, lowering their TCO and all that. Um, but having a solution that's, that has no need for uh, interfacing that with different data sources, whether that's a product information management system or an ERP or different solutions, that's what, that's what we see our customers be worried about. And that's what we um, also think you should avoid. Also interesting to hear that they are already aware of the issues before yeah. replatforming. Yeah. That's probably why they are replatforming already. In many cases, that is the case, yeah. I think we gave our viewers great insights on how to successfully replatform. Thanks for coming on the show today, Tim. Thanks for having me. If you have any further questions about e commerce projects or if you are considering replatforming, please do not hesitate to contact us. In the description of this video, you can find a link that leads you to a flowchart on how to find the right e-commerce vendor for your business. If you'd like to have a personal consultation with our e-commerce experts, feel free to reach out. Our experts are always willing to help. Thanks for watching the e-commerce talk. And until next time, bye!